All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. Give me the loot. I'm sure you heard me say some terms like that. However, Adam Leon is here to talk about his new film, and we're going to get into the South by Southwest um, thing that happened there. That uh, you did what a lot of folks are dreaming about South by Southwest. Yeah, yeah, it's been sort of a crazy. Uh, <laughs> First crazy of all, month. thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, but before we get to that, okay. let's talk about the film, man. Give sure. me the loot. Yes. Um, just talk about the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's a adventure. It's mm -hmm. a fun story about um, these two graffiti writers from the Bronx. Uh, they go on an adventure over the course of a couple of days. Uh, they get into a little trouble, and uh, we wanted to do something that was. Uh, fun and upbeat and just a good summer movie that really captures a moment in uh, time um, of these kids uh, and these kids lives mm -hmm. and in terms of the city as well yeah so. Sophia and Malcolm Sophia and Malcolm yeah where did you pick those ki those two up because I mean they are just you have to see the film but they are just remarkable how tell thank us about you. them thank you well in terms of the characters mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I made a short film a couple years ago. I co-directed a short film called Killer, which isn't based off of this, but mm -hmm. um, we also cast, uh, it also was a lot of non-professional kids in it. Okay. And um, I met Ty Hickson, who's the actor who plays Malcolm in it. And uh, I really liked Ty and I wanted to write something for him. I felt that there was a voice there that I sort of shared with him mm -hmm. um, and I could write for him really well. And so the character is based a little bit on him as a little bit younger kid, me at that yes. age as well. Mm -hmm. um, Sophia, who's a stronger character, um, I, literally, I think she's just a tougher, yes. um, really, really prideful person. Uh, she's a little bit of a tomboy. She exists in a in a boy's world, really, not mm -hmm. really a man's world. Um, but at the same time, has a I, I think these kind of traditional values to her as well. Um, that character came about because I uh, just being around the city and being on the subway and being observant and wanting to do a movie that was set in this world. And you know, I would see these girls who, uh, you know, use colorful language, are a little bit tough, <laughs> but really are are very smart and kind of are the smartest per person in the room in many ways and won't let anything get in their way. And, right. Uh, Ta uh, was it Taisha? Uh, Tashiana. Tashiana, Tashiana Washington. Washington. Yeah. yeah. And you could see it's she's like she's at that point where she's a tomboy but has that little trying mm -hmm. to grow into the woman because mm -hmm. when she smiles and the dimples come out, mm -hmm. everything else melts. Well, Tashi, <laughs> yeah, Tashiana is, a, a, the person, Tashiana is this gorgeous, gorgeous woman, mm -hmm. a young woman who is uh, very glamorous, very different than the character. She's really soft-spoken, doesn't curse. Mm -hmm. um, this is very different than what Sophia is. Yes. And, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so she... Uh, she's just an incredibly talented actress, so she has that real, real beauty and that real, real charm, and she can turn it on in just the right places, and it gives Sophia what we always felt that Sophia needed, which was uh, which was that feminine side, which mm -hmm. was that, like, this is really a, a beautiful woman uh, in sort of this tough girl's uh, frame right now. Right. Uh, and so. Now, they do a lot of, like, the graffiti. It's, to me, it's like they're just trying to... Hmm. They know what they want, but it's just the way to get there, and mm -hmm. they don't really quote know how. But in that environment, it's like, it's like I'm sure you know it's a food chain. Right. They're like at the bottom trying to scrape, scrap, scrap. Right. The cell phone thing. That was. The, tell us about the scene about the cell phone. Which okay. She, gets and she tries to. So basically, she ends up um, her bike gets stolen yes. by these kids, and mm -hmm. she chases one of them down. But the kid with the bike bikes off, <laughs> and so she. She sort of slaps the kid around. He's a young kid, a little punk. He slaps yeah. him around, takes his cell phone. She's sort of funny about it. And um, and then she tries to sell the cell phone. And uh, it, in New York, there are these places where, uh, in some of the bodegas, where you can go in and um, in the back, you can sort of put the cell phone in a mail slot or you knock on a door and someone mm -hmm. takes it. And they'll give you, you know, uh, less than the cell phone's worth, but they'll give you 20 right. bucks or 30 bucks for it. And um, she tries to, she tries to do that, and uh, and it doesn't really go the way that she wants it to. No, um, <laughs> which is pretty much the movie. It mm -hmm. doesn't really go the way that they want it to. Um, but it always, it's that like, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I think yes. that, well, they may not. Ultimately, I think they would look back on the two-day adventure that they had and say that it was it was a really meaningful uh, moment yes. in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, it may not be the most fun time for them, but for the audience, I think it is fun. I think that we as an audience, we're watching this movie and we can see that, you know, they're going to be okay and that it's almost sort of good that these things aren't really going the way that they have. And it's in some <laughs> ways better for them in the long term. Right. I mean, you can't help but 
cheer. Well, mm, that you know they're they're doing a bad thing, but you want them yeah. to kind of be successful because they yeah. want to get that. It's like we hope it works. Hope it works. The scene where Sophia is in walking down the stairs, and the I guess the other crew jumps her mm -hmm. for tagging the other thing. Why did you keep it like that moment and didn't take it further? So I'm glad it's like you didn't take it further right. when they accosted her. Right. So she gets jumped by this rival crew. A lot of the mm -hmm. movie is they want to tag the Mets home run apple. Um, when the Mets hit a home run, this goofy <laughs> plastic <laughs> apple comes up and everybody in the crowd goes crazy. And, mm -hmm. and to get back at this rival crew from Queens, uh, these Mets fans, um, who keep buffing their pieces, they set out to sort of tag the apple. Um, and then uh, during the course of the movie, she runs into the crew and the crew jumps her. Mm -hmm. um, she sort of gets set up. Uh, and the movie is, as I've sort of said, it's an adventure, it's light in tone, it's fun, and that right. scene is a little tonally different. Yes. And um, it is probably the hardest scene, as is, and I just felt this wasn't the type of movie where um, she would get really physically assaulted, or I think that when that scene starts, there could be an instinct to, that she might get sexually assaulted. Yeah. And it's not that movie. That's not what we were doing. Right. Not that that doesn't happen, right? Um, mm -hmm. but that's just not what this movie is. Right. Because sometimes you do just get jumped and they steal your money and they run <laughs> off and say, you know, screw you. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was, it was, tone was a really important thing with this movie. I've seen a lot of... Um, stories set in the city among teenagers, teenagers who live vivid lives, and usually they're pretty dark. Uh, right. And I think that that's important, and there's an important mm -hmm. place for that. Uh, yes. But I also think that it's important to show that sort of I wanted to do a kind of a super bad or a dazed and confused or something like that, but set in this world, that, that these kids also can have fun and they can get into trouble, but it yes. can be on a level that isn't necessarily disastrous. And right. sometimes their parents love them mm -hmm. and they yes. have working class homes that are not necessarily extraordinarily dysfunctional. And, and so I wanted to show that side of it too. And, um, and so that's kind of where that came from. So tone is really important to right. keep a light tone, to keep a fun mm -hmm. tone, um, but that always behind it that there is something else here. And so that's one of the scenes where that comes out. But we never wanted to go too far with that. Good, yeah. Because uh, yeah, I mean, cause I was waiting for someone. I said, I hope somebody comes down the stairs. Right. And, you know, try to whip it on those other those other right. cats doing their thing. You know. But yeah, people have yeah. said, you know, I watched the whole movie and I was worrying that this other shoe was going to drop, that this, like, you know, that somebody was going to get raped or somebody was going to get killed or all yeah. of a sudden the gun was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And that what a relief it is that that doesn't happen in this movie, yes. that there are there are no guns in this movie. Um, no. And uh, and I think that that's, hopefully, if the film works, that's one of the mm -hmm. things that's charming about it or successful about right. it. Right. Now, the depiction of the Bronx. You yes. have folks watch it. What has um, their response been to you you know, filming a slice of their life. Right, because I am not that, right. obviously. Right. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm a white boy from downtown uh, uh, New York. Um, you know, the places that we filmed in the Bronx, we filmed around the Parkchester, we filmed around uh, Castle Hill a bunch. Um, they were so welcoming of us as a crew. We had a very diverse crew. Um, we had a lot of different people working on this movie, and um, we had some people from the Bronx working on this film or right, helping us right. out. And uh, they were really open their arms to us. I think that they were really excited to have a movie portraying their neighborhood and their community that wasn't steeped in negativity. That was something that was fun. And I think that people, you know, sometimes there's, again, there's a place for those stories. But most of the time, at least I like to go to the movies and be entertained and have mm -hmm. a good time. And yeah. I think that a lot of people in the Bronx like that as well. <laughs> and the idea yes. that we were making something that was sort of for them. Um, or about them, it's for right, hopefully right. everybody, but about them that had that experience to it, I think was really exciting for them. And so we had a pretty easy time shooting in the Bronx and um, our reactions so far have been really great. And that means so much to me that people who have helped us out in the movie, people who are from there who've come to see it at, when it played in New York, um, that they just were like, wow, you nailed it, you got it. That's a real slice of our lives. Um, is touching and um, and it's not just me who's telling that story it's a whole right. team of people it's a collaborative mm -hmm. art so um, you know I think it's important to go in knowing what you don't know yes. and uh, and relying on people that you trust to help you tell the story in the right way music yes you have hip-hop music yes you seemed like you had a, I, my ears right mm. 70s and you also have some old-school music yes. I mean, was that just to catch yes. everybody in because I'm roped in like 
Well, holy mackerel! <laughs> really, except for one little spot, the mm-hmm. only hip hop in the mu- in the movie is source music. Is music that's you know on in the background at yes. the places that they're in. The sort of score for the film, mm-hmm. and we do have a guy who does music for us. Some of the stuff that sounds like it's old is actually him creating stuff, which is he's super talented. Yeah, but um, <laughs> wow. but really, the score for the movie is uh, mostly. 50s, 60s, a little 70s gospel rock. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a bunch of other There's a disco song. There's yes. some funky jazz stuff in there. Right. There's uh, there's some indie rock, spacey, dreamy, pothead stuff. Um, <laughs> I, basically, I created that instinct was really early. It was when I had the idea for the story and the mm-hmm. tone of the movie. Right. But before I even had the script, I had a playlist of 150 songs that were just like, these are give me the loot songs. And I think that the reason is uh, t- twofold. One is, um, I wanted to la- let everybody know that we're watching a movie, um, that this is a very authentic world, yes. and these are very real characters and mm-hmm. people, but that not every single thing in the movie is necessarily documentary, um, that right, we're having right. fun here, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it is a bit of a movie world, and so that was always the concept, and I felt that um, that's why it's not shaky cam, it's not why it's, you know, we do these sort of classical kind of shots. Yeah. Um, and the music goes along to that. It sort of says, you know, that we're, we're, we're watching a movie, some other people are creating the story, we're in a movie world. And, and the other thing that goes with that too is, again, about tone, uh, that music's really fun. And, um, and so we, it sort of says, you know, this is a fun, you, you can, just because you're, you're used to being shown this world and it not being fun, and we want to cue you that it's okay, like, take a breath, relax. Yeah. Cut loose, have fun, yes. you know, have a drink, enjoy the movie. <laughs> like, and that. It's that type of film. Right. Now, keeping the actors on script, mm-hmm. how much was the interplay with some people wanted to just ad lib, or was it like, okay, this is the script, this is what mm-hmm. I wrote, let's see you mm-hmm. bring it to life? How much did you let them have that leeway? I wrote a script. I wrote mm-hmm. the script. Right. I'm surprised when I look back on the script at how much it really is the script, um, even in terms of the dialogue. Yeah. But. Um, I always encouraged the actors to inform their characters. We did a lot of rehearsal. So not just the dialogue, but is this really what this person would do here? And we would talk about it, Mm. think about it. And um, really, really love collaborating with actors. And I really, they brought so much to the characters. And then they did bring a lot to the language. And that's not just with Ty and Tashi and what they brought. It's also with even uh, um, Zoe, who plays Ginny, who's the sort of rich stoner white girl. I mean, she was able to say, uh, that's not what this girl would say here. That's not what would be in her room. Um, mm-hmm. And help us out a lot. And uh, and that's important. Um, so the dialogue, you know, I encourage them to use their own words. We did so much rehearsal, so they were prepped for that. Um, and so they were prepped. They knew they knew what the scenes were, and they were able to then you know play with it a little bit. Some of the actors, some of the supporting actors I worked with, they didn't want to change a word at all. They didn't feel comfortable improvising, even okay. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Some of the actors that I worked with, they weren't really that great at doing the dialogue itself. So what we yes. would do often is say, okay, she's gonna come in and she's gonna ask you for money and you're gonna say something to the effect of, get the hell out of here. And you, mm-hmm. you know, just like every point, um, yes. and then, but use your own words. Okay. So it's a total mix of stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. Whatever felt right. Yeah. Before we leave, of course, yes. um, South by Southwest, you did something that is, I would say, a rarity, and a lot of folks are just like, he's our generation cheering you on. So tell everyone, man, what happened? Well, we won. We won at <laughs> South by Southwest. Jury prize. Which uh, which mm-hmm. was really crazy. Uh, I mean, this is a super, super uh, low-budget movie. Um, again, it's a community film, and um, nobody knew... Nobody knows who we are. Uh, there's no cast that you know you've seen in mm-hmm. something else before, and uh, so to go down there and uh, and to not only be a part of the festival, but we were so excited to just get in. And I told everybody we're up for the awards, but we won by being here. But then to have them come up on stage and you know have uh, Jay Hoberman, who's this legendary film critic, come and say all these things about our movie and announce us as the winners was, uh, you know, it's not why you make the movie, right, but right, um, right. to kind of get that recognition, to get mm-hmm. that love from the established film community um, for a movie that, again, is really this neighborhood film, um, was insane. It was just really uh, touching and um, and also very fun, of course. <laughs> and it's been great for the movie. It really helps the movie a lot. Right. So we really appreciate it. Now, didn't it get picked up? It did. Any? It's... Yeah. 
Yeah. So like, come, on, um, yeah, come on, um, come on. Yeah. No, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy six weeks. Uh, again, you know, you make this movie, you make it for not a lot of money at all. Mm -hmm. um, you ask everybody to sort of do favors, and uh, you go down to South by Southwest. You win. You're getting these crazy reviews, and you're on the cover of Variety or all this stuff. And it's and then uh, IFC Films came in, and, and uh, they actually had seen the movie before it won, and they were really supportive of it. Um, and they came in and they bought the movie, and so it'll come out. It's coming out in San Francisco. I think in the fall, uh, they don't have the release date yet, but um, but yeah, I mean the idea that this movie is going to be in movie theaters, you know, in San Francisco, in Chicago, in New York, and LA, it's just like, whew. dude, how are you going to stay grounded, man? I yeah, mean, convince this yeah, to well, like the avalanches. It's like, what are you going to do? Well, you know, we're really we're really good team. I mean, I know you're sort of half joking, but like we are a really really I think good team that supports each other, and good. I think um, is focused on the work. Mm -hmm. And the last six weeks have been absolutely amazing. But I had told one of my producers, Jamin Washington, um, after we premiered in New York, we were at the Museum of Modern Art. We were sold out. It was crazy, you know. I said, this is insane, but there's nothing that felt as good and as fulfilling as when we were out there last summer shooting this movie, making this movie, and telling wow. this story. And he agreed. Yeah. And that, I think, having that perspective and really feeling that genuinely is uh, hopefully will, um, will keep us focused on, on continuing to do good work. Perfect. Everybody, Adam Leon. Thank you. When so the much. film comes out, come see it. Come give on. Give me the loot. I'm telling you, it, it's a, it's it's amazing. Uh, and I'm not and I'm not playing. I mean, it's wonderful. It's touching. It's it's man. It's everything. Like you say, it's gritty. It's original. Oh everything man. You probably Thank want you. The film, man. Thank you so much. Dude, I really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yankee fan, right? I am a Yankee fan. Oakland A's. Yeah. Evil Empire. Nah. I mean, <laughs> I got I got love for the A's, they're doing their thing, they're right. trying. Okay.